Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this Tuesday morning, a beautiful morning to get started here on Panhandle Outdoors. And we'll get started with the weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at 767-5500. That little cool snap we had over the weekend, I think, is about left us. It's getting up to about 91 or 92 degrees here in the panhandle. We're looking at a low tonight of 75, and water temperature actually dropped 2 degrees when it's going from 85 to 83. That's one of those little fingers of a warm current when it does something like that. Let's take a look at our river readings. The river readings at Apalachicola, Blunstown is still flat line. We're looking at a .7. Folks, the river is low. They can't even fish the upper part of the river. They just can't. Get the boats around up there. Uh, Choctatchee Carabill is reading a point three this morning. A point three, and it doesn't look any better. We just uh, we're in desperate need of some rain. We really are. Now uh, all the sloughs and all the dried up, the sandhill ponds, everything just uh, really, really low. Now let's take a look at our uh, tide chart brought to us by Carl Vernon Marine Specialties with docks, seawalls, boat houses, and, and boat lifts. We're looking at a day, June the 4th, and that is one bright spot on the, on the weather scene is our tides. We have really strong tides this week. We're looking at a high tide this morning around 10.04 and a low later on tonight at 9.15. And we have a big strong moon up there making a really strong pull. And uh, we're looking at some really good tides all week long. A good, good outgoing tide, okay? So I uh, hope you're enjoying that great full, speaking of full moon, it's been absolutely beautiful last night or two, and it should be the same way tonight. You hadn't had a chance to look at it. Just take a little bit of time out of your life and step outside and look up at that big moon. It's beautiful. Take our first break, and we'll be right back with our guest. Your vision is precious. If an emergency arises, you don't want to be sitting in a hospital waiting room. Accidents and injuries can happen outside of your workday. That's why our team of physicians provide emergency eye care to our patients anytime, day or night. You can count on your local experts in eye care to be there for you whenever you need us. The Eye Center of North Florida. Panhandle Educators, we offer full service banking. We're five star rated. A safe place for your money. Find us anytime, anywhere. Or come see us on Highway 77 north of the mall. On the east side, across from Rutherford High School. Come see us at the beach on R. Jackson Boulevard. We're here in Southport on Highway 77. Live or work in Bay, Holmes, Jackson, or Washington County? You can be a member. Join, Join us. We'll take care, care of you. you. The letter X, it's one tough letter, and the only one that stands for something. It's the mark of the unknown factor, the spot of the buried treasure, the model of rugged beauty. But what really sets it apart is its power to multiply everything. Sweet old Bob says see and save on all X Mark products today at Soul Tracker. We are so lucky to live in North Florida. We have some of the best fresh and saltwater fishing in the world. My biggest problem is not catching fish, but trying to decide what kind of fish I want to catch. No matter what I'm after, I always stop at Sunjammers Water Sports first. They have just what I need, rods and reels, line, tackle, and most important, fly bait. Yes, sir, we sure are lucky. Welcome back, folks, and welcome, Alan Courtney. Good morning. How are you? All right. The first part of the uh, first week of each month, we have mm -hmm. Alan and Courtney come on and talk about bass fishing, and Alan and I, we spend more time talking during the commercial break on bass mm -hmm. fishing, I think we do, uh, but it's dry, right? Yes, it's very dry. You just went but, up to the sand hills. Yeah, I went Friday and Saturday to Gap Pond, and uh, we, we're thinking about having our bass club tournament there in a couple weeks, and so yeah. I wanted to make sure you could put in. And it's it, you can do it, but it's really difficult. I had, yeah. to, I had to wade out there and push my boat out ten or fifteen yards to be able to just get enough water to put my trolling motor in the water. Wow! You know to be able yeah, and, Gap, and Gap Pond is usually one of the ones that mm -hmm. if, if all the rest of them are dry, you can you can at least go to Gap Pond. Yeah. And and you still can, but it's difficult to put in. But you can do it. So. Are you going? Are y'all going to try to have a tournament there? 
we'll vote on it tonight the, and, uh, and see the okay. democratic way. So, All right. But it's close by, and you can catch some fish. I caught a few fish up there. Speaking yeah. of catching fish now, you've had some folks catching fish. So. Oh, they always do, you what, know. What else been going on? Well, we'll start out like we always right. do with the, this the results. This is the results from last month, and uh, this is the Liberty County Anglers Bass Club. Chris Kincaid and Jinker Porter, they fished in the Apalachicola River and had 12.2 pounds. All right. I think this is about the fourth month these guys have won in a row. They're probably going to kick them out. <laughs> you know? All right. This is uh, Lunkers Bass Club, Tom Spawn, and they fished into the road landing at the Apalachicola River, and he had 15 and a half pounds. Boy, that's a nice one. That's, that's a good stringer. I believe they came out of Dead Lakes. So oh, man. Not sure, but I think so. Uh, Mr. Tony Hogan from Miracle Strip Bass Club, and they fished in the Tensaw River, and uh, he had 8.25 pounds total weight. That's a nice one. And this one here is Gulf Coast Bass Anglers, Jerry Lassiter. Uh, here in, in Panama City, a bass club. He had 7.93 pounds. They also fished out of the end of the road in Apalachicola River. That's a good location. Got a plenty of room and all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've got a nice setup there for, for you can put several boats there, tie them up to the docks. So. I was one of my former boys. You know, Mr. Longbot? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, we fished. That's the club I'm in, Bay County Bass Club, and we fished out of White City. He had 11.38 pounds. Long, he's always got a smile on his face. Yeah, he? I like Long. He's, he's a funny guy. So. This is the Poor Guys Bass Club. Uh, I think they're over in the Tallahassee area. They went to Lake Seminole, and uh, Mr. Eddie Ditto won it with 12.08 pounds. All right. And this is Consolidated Bassmasters, and they were at Lake Talquin, and this is Wayne Krill. He had a little over 15 pounds. That's a nice bass there. Mm -hmm. That's a good stringer. Talquin is, is good right now. This is the Seminole Bassmasters out of the Mariana area, Kelly Hewitt at Lake Seminole, and he had right at 19 pounds fishing there. So. All right. And this is our, this is the Federation Nation. This is a qualifier. This is the third one. We'll have four qualifiers throughout the year yeah. to qualify for the state championship. And this is kind of the amateur way to make it to the Bassmaster Classic. Okay. You know, so. All right. But on the boater division, David Boyd won it with a little over 19 pounds. This was out of Lake Talpin. All right. And then we have a non-boater division, which the guys in the back of the boat are only against the other guys in the back right. of the boat. And uh, Bob Garris won it, and he had a little over 15 pounds. Oh uh, man, look at that one. Yeah, that's good. this is Deer Point Lake Team Trail, and we have that tournament the last Saturday of every month at Deer Point Lake at High Point Landing. And Kevin Tuller won it with right at 15 pounds. That's one of our former boys. Oh, Kevin was a, was a good bass fisherman. Mm -hmm. You know, his daddy, his daddy was a good bass fisherman too. Right? Oh, yeah. He was real yep. good. Yeah, he was, he was always there when he could be. Yep. And this is the American Bass Anglers. It, uh, this is David Howe. He had 19.22 uh, pounds. This was at Lake Seminole. So there's some good stringers. Helps looking. That's some good bass running. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and as you can tell, this is our Tuesday night shootout. We have those every other Tuesday, and tonight, tonight will be one of them. So okay. if you're interested in coming up to Deer Point Lake and fishing, this is Drew Benton. You know Drew. Oh, yeah. He had, uh, on the 22nd, he had 9.70 pounds. And that's catching him in what, three hours? Three hours, right? yeah, from 6 to 9 o'clock. That, that's so, good fishing right, right there. That's not bad at all. <laughs> so. And on the 8th of the month, Eric Warning won the Tuesday night shootout with 10.96 pounds. So. Wow. And last but not least, as we showed last last month, this was the tournament that me and uh, Steve McLemore won, the Project Graduation Tournament, with yeah. a little over 15 pounds out of White City. Yeah, y'all so. walked away with first place prize, won all that doesn't, money. Doesn't happen <laughs> as often as I would like, but... It still fascinates, it's, it's nice fascinates me every month, Adam, when you bring in these pictures, that how what nice and healthy these bass mm -hmm. are looking. And, and the great thing about bass fishing, we're releasing them, and then we'll catch them again. That, and there's plenty of time. Friday was one... I was up there and I caught a gap pond and I probably caught one, about four and a half pounds. Mm -hmm. And um, he had been caught and released because we'll put these culling tags in their mouth. And a lot of times it'll, it'll you know, right under here, it'll leave a slit, you yeah. know, and, mm -hmm. and that one that was over four pounds had that slit in there. So he had been in yeah. somebody's boat before, weighed in a tournament, let go, and caught again. So it doesn't hurt. You know, catch and release yeah. is certainly a good thing. So. All right, now we got we got all kind of uh, tips and all, right? Mm -hmm. We got all yeah. kinds of things. We got a few so, other things to show here. Why don't we go we'll go and take our break now since we finish the pictures and Alan's got all kind of little tips for, for the bass fishermen. We'll be right back. Clay O'Neill's land clearing. When you need land clearing, pond digging, road building, or any type of excavation, Clay O'Neill's land clearing is fully equipped to handle it. If the job is big or small, he covers it all. 
serving the Florida Panhandle from Madison County to Escambia County. He's just a phone call away. Hey, thanks, Clay, for another job well done. Harold Milling Company, rough and tough dog food. Harold Milling Company builds it. They build hog feed. They build dairy feed. They make chicken feed. They have specialty feeds for rabbits. If you got a worm farm, grandmother used to have a worm farm. Look at the Harold Milling Company. You want to go down and get your, the dog's not running anymore. It's all over with. You want to get that 16% uh, and drop down from the 26% protein. You don't want old Rover to get fat. Harold Milling Company, you can buy it almost any feed store in the Panama City area. Steel, the number one selling brand of handheld outdoor power equipment in America. Right now, dependable grass trimmers start at just $159.95. For cleanup, hardworking steel blowers start at $149.95. Plus, double your limited warranty with your steel product purchase. Start easier, work smarter, finish faster with steel, number one in America. We know Bob says see and save today and every day on all steel outdoor products at Soul Tractor. When you stop by Blue Water Outriggers, you will find everything for your outdoor adventure. Stock up on all your favorite brands and shop for some of the latest outdoor gear and accessories. You can also shop online and have your orders delivered straight to your home. Our flagship store is nestled right off the of Highway 98 in the Port City Shopping Center, just steps away from the Port St. John Marina. You will love our selection, our prices, and our friendly service. Welcome back. Glad you're with us this morning. You know, once a month, we take a close-up look on bass fishing, and Alan Courtney uh, does a great job, and we show you all the winners and all, and show you all the healthy bass around, but also Alan is always good about bringing tips and bringing different things and all, and we were, we were talking about patterns a while ago. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the things y'all you know, look for when we're talking about patterns? Well, when you're out on the water, you know, fishing, whether you're in a tournament or just out fishing for the day having fun, you want to try to, you want, of course, you're there to try to figure out how to catch the bass, uh -huh. so you want to figure out you know, if, is there a pattern that particular day? It, you know, let me just let me just read what I got here as a definition of, of a pattern is a composite of traits or features characteristic of an individual or a group. One's pater, uh, pattern of behavior. So while you're out there fishing, you want to figure out the bass's pattern of behavior. You know, you do the same thing yeah. in hunting. You talk about a you know, big buck and all. They always pattern them. You see article right? after article about that. These big deer hunters and all always talking about pattern, pattern, mm -hmm. pattern. And you do the same thing in bass sure. fishing. Sure. Um, yeah. You know, when you catch, you're out there fishing for the day, and you, you catch your first fish. You wanna, you wanna, okay, take note of how you caught him, where you caught him. You mm -hmm. know, was he on an outside bend in a curve? Uh, was, you know, by a stump in an outside mm -hmm. bend? Mm -hmm. Was was the current going out? If, if so, was he on the downside current of the stump, mm -hmm. upside current of the stump? There's, I mean, there's just so many different mm -hmm. places that that fish can be. But you want to keep note of that, and uh, then the next time you catch one or see that same yeah. type of uh you know setup in the next curve try that you know and you'll, you'll figure out eventually that most of the time not all the time but there is a pattern to catching the fish for that day let me ask you this you know we were talking about all the low water in the river system i know you fish a lot on the bottom end of the river system so it's not a huge problem but when you're trying to pattern something in, in low in low water mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the things you look for well i'll give you a pattern that i found that gap pond was low mm -hmm. you know it's as low as i've seen it a long time and it wasn't hard to figure out a pattern Friday um, because there is no shallow water. I mean, the, the water that was four and five feet last, last year is, is one and a half, two feet right mm -hmm. now. So you're out there in the main, I was out there in the main body of the lake and there's a lot of cuts in the grass that lead back into that shallow water. Mm -hmm. And so every cut that you found in that grass had an opening in it, you know, going through mm -hmm. it. There was fish sitting in front of that. And what they were doing was probably waiting for the bait fish to come through that cut. Okay. But, every, but you know, so that was a pattern. It wasn't, it wasn't hard to figure out that one, you know. So, but you have to just pay attention to what, to what you're doing that day and try to figure out a pattern. Now, a pattern will work, you know, the next month, the same time, you know, depending on mm -hmm. maybe the moon, the same time, the mm -hmm. moon was the same way the next month that it was today that you were catching the fish, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and it'll work year after year. So how do you, how do you, uh, I know in, in uh, brim fishing all has a really big impact. How does the moon impact the bass fishing? 
Is it usually, like you have, say, a big tournament around a full moon? Mm. What do you well, do? in the springtime, you want the full moon. You know, they'll uh -huh. start bedding on certain on full moons, mm -hmm. and so you know that's that's what you're looking for there. And and there's another thing I was going to say here. Uh, do your homework. A lot of, they they make some software out there that uh, you can keep a log of every single fishing trip. Yeah. You know, what the conditions were the day that you were there, what the water temperature, air yeah. temperature, barometric pressure, was the tide going in, was the tide yeah. going out. Yeah, what was the water level and moon phases as well, or you can write that down by hand. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it'll pay off in the long run. And patterns are also good for year after year. You know, mm -hmm. if you keep this log book and you can look next year, the month that that month that you're in now mm -hmm. to see, you know, hey, are the conditions halfway the same, and try that same pattern again. Um, I was going to tell you about Bobby Smith. Yeah, you know Bobby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one time we were staying together at Lake Talquin for a tournament the next day. Mm -hmm. And he had this photo book and he said, hey, Alan, look at this thing. And so I, I opened up this book and it's, it's just like a, you know, your normal photos. But mm -hmm. under each, there was a picture at Lake Talquin, they used to draw that lake down about every seven years. Mm -hmm. I mean, they drew it down to where it was just strictly the channel. So Bobby had these photos in there of all the dry lake bed. Mm -hmm. And he got out there and took, and sometimes he would build a certain structures for the fish, punch in his GPS to where that structure was. And it wrote that under every picture and the conditions and things like that. And, wow. and it, I mean, it was really a thick book. So he did his homework over the years of doing that, and it's paid off because Bobby's, yeah. you know, he's one of the best best tournament fishermen around. Yeah, he is. Know, probably makes as much as anybody does in, in fishing, you know. Yeah, so, you know, uh, so he was able to put some structures out there. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and then, and like I said, punched in the GPS yeah. coordinates while smart. he's standing there beside him, took pictures of it, mm -hmm. and put them all in this book. That takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And he has two or three of these books. But and he can go back next year yeah. or year after year and look at his book, you know, according to the conditions and all this kind of stuff. And well, that goes, oh, so. we're talking about pattern now. We're talking about structure, how important structure is. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. some kind of, some place for the fish to hide and, and, and find bait. Yeah, any, anything, you yeah. know, some, like Gap Pond out there, if, if you, uh, the, mi the middle of the lake is pretty bare, you know. Mm -hmm. But I idled around out there uh, with my side imaging and down imaging mm -hmm. sonars uh, Friday and Saturday. I found a couple little, just small little pieces of, I'm not sure what they were, you know, but just showed up on the machine and, and caught a couple of fish off of them. Mm -hmm. And so if there's any small little structure out there, the, the fish is going to be beside it, you know. Mm -hmm. the what about are your, your timing as far as, you know, early morning or late afternoon or middle of the day? Now, Friday I got there at noon and, and caught several between noon and, and uh, four o'clock in the afternoon. It was overcast. It was windy, and mm -hmm. clear. It's crystal clear out there. Yeah. And in a crystal clear lake like Gap Pond, those wind is, wind is your friend for sure. It breaks up, it breaks up the the bait. They can't tell that it's artificial quite as much because of all the ripples mm -hmm. on the on the way on the top of the water and everything. So, but the clear clear lakes is is much more difficult. So you yeah. you're hoping for some wind when you're fishing crystal clear water. Yeah. You know. So, but. All right. But yeah, keep an eye, keep up with the pattern if you can, you know, while you're out there, because it'll certainly help you, you know, for the rest of that day and, and for year after year, mm -hmm. you know, if you write it all down and keep up with it. So, and I'm, I am uh, guilty of not doing that as much as I should, because when I get home, I'm pretty tired. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, do get, you do get up early. I know. You, what time do you usually get to work? Uh, normally five. I went in at 3.30 this morning just because I... Had so to come he goes, here to, he goes you know, to work and he comes up here. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like I'm tardy when you know, I see you because you've already been working a couple <laughs> yeah, of hours. I, that way I've already made up the time that, I, that it takes to do it. Yeah. Hey, I enjoy doing it. I'm well, glad, we, you, glad you're having well, me on here. We appreciate, so. appreciate mm -hmm. all this good information. Yeah. I know if I were to give you all a, a test question, a multiple choice test question, I was at the end of the school, so I'm thinking test questions. If I ask you what is the most popular fishing in America, A, red fishing, B, speck of trout, C, bass fishing, or D, brim fishing, what would the correct answer be? And the most popular fish in America is bass fishing, of course, mm -hmm. all across America. And, and you see why, because they're exciting to catch. They just, they come in there oh, strong and <laughs> they come in there to I, get. I've been hooked on it, you know, ever yeah. since I was uh, probably 12, 13 years old, you know, yeah. so. Yeah, well, that, it, it's, it's really a, what I call a gateway fish with so many fishermen, even they may end up fishing for blue marlin, but a lot of them start on bass fishing, brim that, fishing yeah. and bass fishing. Oh, sure, and then, and then get into the salt water. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, for, for example, be uh, Matt Smith, who used to love love to uh, bass fish, and, and still does, but now he's he's really a salt water fishing guy. And occasionally, I'll, I'll not very often, but occasionally I'll take my ranger and get out there and 
pretty bio or yeah, someplace. The well, first the first couple of cold snaps of the year and go catch a redfish or two yeah. or a couple of speckled trout or two. Yeah, that's not against the law for a bass fisherman with a salt water salt no. water guys. That's not well, the red fishing is, is basically the same as bass fishing. I've said that it's, over and over again. Yeah, they, they, the same, they, same lures a lot of times. Mm -hmm. and you know, They look a lot, they strike a lot. Mm -hmm. They fight a little bit harder. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's big. easy to get, I can see how you could get hooked on red fishing, yeah. no doubt about it. So. All right, we're going to take a final break and come back with some of these tips from Alan. When you think of a successful hunting season, two things come to mind. Browning and CNG Sporting Goods. Browning is the best there is, and CNG Sporting Goods is your factory direct full line Browning dealer. CNG stocks Browning guns, camo, knives, scopes, gun safes, bows, and much more, including hunting and fishing license. Look over the new Browning BAR camo short track and X bolt rifles. Why pay good money for anything less than a Browning? Browning and CNG, the best there is. Home of the experts. When you have work to do, get it done with a Kubota. Kubota is the top choice for reliability, efficiency, and value. And right now, during Kubota Rewards, take advantage of zero down and 0% APR for up to 60 months on new Kubota utility and ag tractors, tractor loader backhoes, and utility vehicles. It pays to own orange. See your Kubota dealer today. See and save on all Kubota tractors and equipment at Soul Tractor today. Bill Kramer's Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC is Panama City's exclusive full-line dealership. Built on a 45-year foundation of trust and total customer satisfaction in all departments. Including our huge pre-owned department, where we'll pay top dollar for your current automobile as a trade-in. Or we'll place your vehicle on our lot and help you sell it. At Bill Kramer's Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC. Four decades, three generations, one tradition. Sunrise to sunset. A walk through nature takes you on a journey of Florida's Emerald Coast. You'll encounter the wildlife, birds, lighthouses, indigenous to the beautiful land and seascapes of Florida. Set to the sounds of nature and enhanced with easy listening music. Only $14.95 plus $4.95 shipping and handling. NatureWalkDVD.com or send check or money order to the address on the screen. A walk through nature. Visually stunning. Okay, welcome back, folks. Glad you're with us this morning, along with Adam Courtney here on Bass Fishing. Let's first take a look at Express Lane Fishing Game Forecast for today. We're looking at our times this afternoon. You're looking at 2:02 to 4:02. Excellent time right there. Beautiful day today. And then tonight, 1:17 uh, a.m. to 3:17 a.m. Uh, Adam, I know your daughter Elena just just graduated. Yes, so she I, did. I know, uh, how's that feel to have a Graduated young lady. Uh, we're we're proud of her. We really are. She well, did good. She had a good grade point average. She did. And had a really good time in high school. Yeah. You know, was homecoming queen and she calendar was, girl cover and yeah. and uh, just beautiful just, young lady and, and was just outstanding in my, in my class. I just that whole class was that she was in. It was just it was just a joy to teach. And they would come in smiling every day. What are we gonna do now? Yeah. I mean, oh, she would come home saying, "Guess what I learned today?" You know, <laughs> stuff she never thought ever that she would learn. It, you know, it fascinates you know. me talking to parents of the students I have and all that. I, you want to think 18-year-old kids will go home at supper and talk about what they did mm -hmm. at, at oh, school. That's, that's that, a good that, thing, no doubt that's about a, it. That's a thrill to yeah. me. You know, she was a fine young lady. I know she'll do real real good with her life. So she's, very well. she's been good and hopefully she'll keep right on. Yeah. yeah. So Okay. But. All right, now we got some uh, tournaments coming up. Yeah, I'll Let's just show see. you two or three of uh, this is this weekend at White City, our Elite Anglers Team Trail. It's it's okay. five hundred dollar entry fee. It's a big one, but five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. okay. And we've we've been averaging almost thirty boats our first two tournaments, and that's wow. not bad with a five hundred dollar entry fee. So, wow. in first place is going to generally be around four thousand dollars. So, wow, this is the Elite Anglers. Uh, Team Elite trail. Anglers Team Trail. It'll be at White City this weekend. Okay. So if you're interested, you can give me a call. I can tell you more about it. All right. So, and. Yeah, this one is, uh, what date is that? Later on this year, September. In September 29th, yeah. okay. I this remember that. That's my daughter's birthday. Bill County Sheriff's Department Tournament. It's $10,000 first place. You can, go to, you can go to my website and uh, the annual tournaments. And from there, you can go to their site and, and register. That's and always then, a big crowd. That's oh, yeah, a, there that's was a, a fun well time. over 100 boats last yeah. year, $10,000. Guaranteed for $10,000 first wow. place. Wow, that's nice. And then you got another. This yeah. is some big, you're talking about some big prize money. Mm -hmm. You definitely got that crooked or what? That one's okay. also in September. It's the uh, second annual Lake Seminole Open Team Bass Tournament. It's uh, out of Bainbridge, right. Georgia at the Earl, Mo Earl, Earl May Boat Basin. $150 okay. entry fee. Guaranteed $10,000. Boy, so, I, you know, 
I, my, you're talking about students, they're always talking about they want to make some money and all. I tell them you got to enter some of these fishing tournaments. Now, you're mm -hmm. talking about, about $30,000 that you could win. Uh, oh, yeah. You yeah. Know, if you now, could. there is some competition. Oh, yeah. no about it when you start talking about Not that. guaranteed. A lot of your students are coming up there on uh, the Tuesday nights and, yeah, you know, and fishing those Tuesday night tournaments. It's yeah. good to see. You know, there's well, it, it's, it's convenient. I mean, you can do it. You can work all day and come in there a couple of hours. And then, then, uh, then, you yeah. know, cost you $5 in gas and yeah. your truck and your boat, and you can win first place. Is generally three hundred and fifty dollars on Tuesday night. Yeah, that's they, not bad for three hours of fishing. And they like to fish night. against each other too. They, oh, talk, yeah. they talk about it at school. Uh, yeah, and, and it's probably more of I won rather than yeah. I made three hundred dollars. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, to beat to beat their friends, what yeah. it's all about. You all know? right, you got some tips for us? We got we got time to get into that. All or right, you were talking about. Uh, sure, I just wanted to show, show you a couple a couple things, and, and a lot of people know this, but and you can't hardly see this, but this is braid that a lot of you throw on your when you're throwing around heavy cover and. Yeah. Uh, there's, okay, there's that horny toad yeah. that I was been using here lately. But this braid over time, this is 85 pound test. But this braid over time, it, it comes in at a, at a at a dark green color. But over time, the water is going to turn it like you can see it there plain as day. It's yeah. turning white. Yeah, it fades. Mm -hmm. And you can see that in the water. So I, I'll always. Now you take, would think they would have uh, taken care of that. You would think. You would think. You would think they'd figure out. You know, <laughs> but maybe they want you to. Okay, it's white. I'm going to throw it in the garbage and buy some Ooh, more. So, I about that. and it's not and it's not cheap. You know, a spool of this stuff. Just 150 yards mm -hmm. is about 30 dollars. Wow! You know? But I always take a just a, take a black sharpie mm -hmm. and uh, color that line black. Okay, so you, you might hold it. You, you just yeah. Sort of you. Yeah, you just take it and just take and you won't be able to see it too much yeah, from there. Right. But but well, just you take do. your just take your sharpie and run up and down that okay. line, you know, and it'll turn it black and okay. it'll disappear. You have to do that about every trip once it turns white, you know. And you would think the sharpie would last longer, but it doesn't. But that's definitely something you need to do to kind of. Kind of make that line a little more visible once it turns once it turns white. Oh, that's like a good it does. tip right there. So, and I was going to show you in the past. I'll show you these tungsten tungsten weights. That you know, this is an ounce and a half in tungsten, which in lead would be twice this size. So, but some of these tungsten weights come with with rubber inserts already inserted in, in the middle of them. And if you're using if you're mm -hmm. using these weights for flipping, which is you know flipping in the heavy cover, which I've told told you in the past, you want to peg these weights. And with monofilament, which a lot of people use, uh -huh. you know, maybe 25, 30 pound monofilament, you don't want to use a toothpick because it can damage the line. If you're using, if you're using the braid, you can use a toothpick. It's not going to hurt it at all. Uh -huh. So a lot, of, and a lot of these tungsten weights don't have any inserts in them at all. Uh -huh. So they have this, down at Angler's Tackle and, and Bass Pro Shops, you can buy these little rubber, they look like a rubber toothpick. Okay. But you'll take it, once your line is in there, Take this rubber looking toothpick okay. and get it in here. And as you'll see, it'll slide, it'll slide through and it'll become tight. And uh -huh. so it's rubber and up against your line, it's not gonna hurt at all. So then just cut off each end, each end of that rubber. So it's, it's in there nice and tight and snug and, and cool. that'll keep from damage your line. Cause okay. when you're flipping in this heavy cover, you want your line to be pegged. All right, <laughs> that's great. That's great tip. So, I'm telling uh -huh. Adam, we're gonna run out of time folks. That's some good tips right there, buddy. Just, Every little thing helps, doesn't it? Oh, it does. It's, it's things that, you know, you learn from doing it, and it's All nice right. to share it with some people, you know. Thank you, buddy. We're through? I think we're through. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next month. Thank you all for watching the show, folks. You do something good for somebody. God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.